What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Talking Thrones. Unfortunately, Season 7 has now ended and we are going to have another long wait until Season 8 begins. I know some of you have been asking me what I'm going to do with my channel during the off-season, so for those of you that do not know, I will continue making videos all year. Even though the season is over, I will still release several videos each week, so I'm hoping all of you new subscribers will stick around during this long night as we head into the off-season. In this video, I want to go over a few things that are still unresolved as of right now that we should see take place in Season 8. This isn't necessarily a prediction video, this is more like a preview video. Also, I know there are a lot of Season 8 leaks floating around out there already, but do not believe those leaks. They are 100% bullshit. There were a few different things that happened in the Season 7 finale that can change the landscape in the last season. The final season will only have six episodes, but one of HBO's executives said they want to make each episode in Season 8 feature film length, somewhere around 90 minutes per episode. So even though there is only six episodes left, the episodes will be long enough to give us a full season worth of content. And considering how fast things are moving, I think we can expect just about anything to happen in Season 8. So first, I want to talk about the relationship between Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen. As we saw in the Season 7 finale, Jon and Danny have honored the Targaryen tradition by keeping it all in the family. Ever since Season 1, Daenerys has assumed she can no longer have children. And they have made sure to remind us of this several times in the last few episodes, but I think it's quite clear now that Daenerys will in fact get pregnant anyway. As I have said in my last video, I believe death will pay for life, which will allow Daenerys to get pregnant once again. But not only will she get pregnant, I believe she will have Jon Snow's child. Some of you said since Jon Snow is a Targaryen and Daenerys is a Targaryen, that could be the perfect ingredients, I should say, that would allow for this to happen. Some of you have also said since Jon Snow has died, it was his death that would actually pay for life, and that's what will cause Daenerys to get pregnant. Personally, I still think it's because of Asarion's death. I think Daenerys had to lose something close to her for her to be able to pay for life. But I do like the idea about Daenerys needing to breed with another Targaryen to allow her to have children. I do think that is a very good candidate. But now you have to wonder about their relationship moving forward. We just got a massive revelation thanks to Bran Stark and Samuel Tarly. Rhaegar and Lyanna were married and this makes Jon Snow a legitimate Targaryen and rightful heir to the Iron Throne putting him in front of Daenerys Targaryen's claim. This news is going to completely change the face of the politics in Westeros, although the Great War is here. This is going to make Danny and Jon's relationship very awkward. If Daenerys is in fact pregnant, Jon is going to have to make a tough decision. We know that Jon is not going to want a child of his being born a bastard. That was the whole reason he was still a virgin in the first place. He told Sam the reason why he never slept with Ross was because what if he got her pregnant? Then there would be another bastard named Snow and that's not a good life for a child. So I sat there in the brothel as Rose took off her clothes. But I couldn't do it. Because all I could think was, what if I got her pregnant? If she had a child, another bastard named Snow. It's not a good life for a child. Knowing how John felt about this, he will want to marry Daenerys if he knows she is pregnant with his child. But can you imagine how the North, and possibly even Sansa, would feel about all of this happening at once? As of right now, no one else knows the truth about Jon Snow's parents and his claim for the Iron Throne except for Bran, Sam, and Hallen Reed. We have seen the North ready to revolt against Jon now that he has left them to go south and greet with a Targaryen. But we have also seen how the show is changing as it heads towards its endgame. Almost all the characters are learning to accept others no matter their differences and their past conflicts. Now that the Great War is here, all of that has to be put to the side in order for everyone to come together and defeat the Night King. This is something that's going to have to continue happening if everybody wants to survive. Now that the Night King is coming south, I'm not so sure if the Northerners are going to even have time to question Jon Snow or Daenerys. I also think once they learn what Daenerys has sacrificed to help them, they will be more understanding and willing to work together. They really don't have a choice, they're going to have to accept Daenerys for who she is and Jon Snow for who he is when this big revelation comes out and becomes public knowledge. I could see some of the Northerners being upset and angry and leaving, but they will not survive the winter if they choose to do that. The first thing we will see is the Night King completely destroying the Night's Watch. 
then I believe he will head to Winterfell and that's where we will see a huge war as everyone tries to defend it. Like I have said before, I think the Night's Watch will no longer have a purpose after the Great War is over. With the Wall being destroyed and everything that was north of the Wall now being south already, there will be no reason to have a Night's Watch anymore if the Night King and the Army of the Dead get defeated. There will be nothing left north of the Wall that they will need to protect the realm from. As of right now, Cersei is the only one not willing to play ball, even though she knows the threat is real. She was given a demonstration with the One White, but she still doesn't understand how serious this threat actually is. This is going to severely complicate things for Jon and Daenerys, not only because they will not have the Lannister troops helping them, but Cersei now has reinforcements on the way from Essos, so Jon and Daenerys could potentially be facing an army on two different fronts. Jaime has finally woke up and realized he can no longer stand by Cersei's side and support her madness. Jaime's decision to leave is also very interesting because you have to wonder where he is going to be going. Winter is now reaching King's Landing, so I can only imagine how harsh the weather is going to be going as he heads north. But how will Jaime get greeted when he arrives? We know that Jon and Daenerys was willing to put aside their differences to fight together with the Lannisters. But Jon has no idea that it was actually Jaime who pushed Bran out of the tower window at Winterfell. Bran did have a mashup version of Visions a few seasons ago, and one of those visions was him falling out of the tower, but he still didn't see who pushed him. The only two people alive right now that know this for a fact is Theon and Brienne. Lady Catelyn was telling people that the Lannisters were responsible for this, but all of those people are now dead. But Brienne knows and she is in the North. But I don't see Brienne ever snitching on Jaime. I think she still loves Jaime too much to see him be put in a position of possibly being executed for crippling Bran. So I want to ask all of you this. Everybody that is watching and listening to this right now, leave a comment down below. And let me know what you think will happen with Jaime when and if he makes it to Winterfell. What will happen if Bran Stark reveals the truth about Jaime pushing him out of the window? Let me know what you think about that down below. Another interesting thing to note about Jaime heading north is now we are going to have all the Valyrian steel in one general place. And this was something I had talked about before too. This isn't a coincidence. Now that the Great War is here, we're going to need all the Valyrian steel in this war being put to use. All of the Valyrian steel swords in this show are now right where they belong. Jaime also knows those swords were made from Ned Stark sword ice, so I'm hoping after the fighting has ended, he could do the right thing and leave that sword with the Starks. That's assuming he's still alive after the war. But I'm not so sure Jaime's going to survive this war. He's not really capable of defending himself anymore. The only reason why he has survived this long is out of pure luck in his Valyrian steel plot armor. This also puts Jamie in position of fulfilling a prediction I made several months ago. Now that Jamie is going north, he could end up sacrificing himself for one of the Starks in order to complete his own redemption arc. If Jamie has to die, that would be a great way for him to go by putting himself on the line for someone else, someone that he had wronged in the past, but we will see. The stage is also being set for another redemption arc to be completed in Season 8. And this is another prediction I have made ever since spoiler photos came out showing Yara Greyjoy being a prisoner of Euron Greyjoy. Theon will take his small rescue team and attempt to save Yara, just like Yara tried to save Theon back when Ramsay had him as his captive. But I have a feeling Theon will be a little bit more successful. I know some of you completely disagree with me about this, but I believe Theon will complete his arc by putting his own life on the line while attempting to set Yara free. And in the process, he will go head to head with his uncle Euron. Theon may die trying, and I can easily see that happening, but if he does, he will die doing something heroic for his sister, who he abandoned back in episode 2. There is only one season left, which means every single character's arc will come to a close. Whether you believe it or not, this is Theon's arc, just like I believe Jaime's arc will be for one of the Starks. This story began with Jaime pushing a Stark out of the window, and I think his story may end by saving one of the Starks, and that person most likely being Bran Stark in some way. But keep in mind, I know nothing. It's going to be interesting to see what all they are able to fit into this story during Season 8 with only 6 episodes left. I truly am hoping they do make each episode around 90 plus minutes like they said they wanted to do. There is still a lot of story left to be told, and even with all of its flaws, I am still very excited to see how things turn out in the end. So comment down below and let me know what are some of your initial predictions after seeing the Season 7 finale. 
What are some of the things that you can see happening when the final season begins? I'm curious to hear all of your thoughts. I am going to begin on my Season 7 finale breakdown video now, and I should have that ready to upload sometime tomorrow, so I hope to see all of you back for that one. And like I said earlier in this video, even though the season is over, I will continue to make videos all year, so don't go anywhere just yet. I want to thank you all for watching tonight's video, I really do hope you enjoyed it, and I also want to thank my Patreon supporters. Your generosity never goes unnoticed. I hope you all have a great night. Bye.